I'm Andrew Tarantola, Senior Editor at Engadget. To my left, we have Stu Lipoff, uh, a IEEE Life Fellow and President of IP Action Partners, or IP Action Partners, yes. Uh, then we have Nader Hamda, uh, Founder and CEO of Ozabot. And Sabri, uh, Sam, San, I'm sorry, <laughs> Sabri Sansoy, uh, CEO and Chief Roboticist at um, Organic. Uh, this is the Perfect Strange Droid panel discussion where we'll be discussing how robotics will change our relationships with both robots and each other. So, uh, to just get started, can you guys give me uh, your feelings and reactions to the current state of uh, robotics in the home? Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, I don't know if you want me to start, but uh, oh, of course, yeah. good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> so uh, when I, I hear the word robots, I think about the old industrial legacy of uh, these things are only for hot, heavy, or hazardous environments. And now all of a sudden, that technology uh, is really finding its way in the home. And I was trying to think of an analogy. And the one I came up with was it, it deals with interactions between man and machines for things that you used to do between people. And it's dealing with uh, the triple use now in my mind, things that are unimportant, unpleasant, or useful. <laughs> and boy, we're finding that everything from you know, vacuuming up uh, the home to entertaining us or taking care of our, uh, I saw something on the show floor that uh, looks after your dog and feeds it when it's hungry. So it seems to be anything that we used to do between people or animals is now being invaded by the robot space. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think robots are in everything that we do now. In the in the in the in the home, you know, in the past, we would think of uh, a washing machine, a, a dishwasher. We're like, oh, those are cool things that can help us. Those are actually robots. They they look at certain commands and they execute, and that's what robots really do. Uh, the Roomba, all of a sudden, served another purpose that we were like, oh, this is kind of cool. It can actually clean the house for us. And we started to get into more service-oriented robots. And little by little, they are starting to take over a lot of the mundane, executable things that, that we, as, as humans, kind of want to push off. And that's only growing. It's not really going away. Yeah, we're, we're still far away from, I'm going to be the negative guy here. <laughs> we're still far away from Rosie the Robot from Jetsons. Can you hear me? Um, uh, there's so artificial intelligence. The original term was coined in 1955. Uh, it's uh, it was for a machine that can uh, learn, reason, deduce, infer, uh, and make uh, initiate action. Um, and um, uh, there's about 30 plus subcategories of AI: it's machine learning, computer vision, robotics, uh, and together, the goal is to make. Rosie the robot, if you will, but uh, really the, the hot areas right now are machine learning and uh, uh, chat, chat, uh, which I'll talk about later probably, but uh, but we're getting there. It's just, it's just uh, I mean, these robots are single use. You know, you have a robot that cleans a vacuum and that's it. But I want my robot to do more, so. Yeah, that's my Absolutely. And so what do you guys feel is the, uh, is the biggest obstacle for, between us and actually getting a Rosie the robot? Uh, what what do, needs to be done to get from a uh, Roomba to a uh, fully autonomous house cleaner? Well, uh, boy, uh, there is such a basket of technologies that are uh, that are in this thing that we're we're calling a robot, and I think the reason for the excitement now is there each of them are just starting to get to the point where they're affordable, they're feature rich enough, uh, they can deal with power, but I. I think we, we still have issues associated with autonomous devices, with battery power. Uh, we still don't have, I think, all the uh, artificial intelligence algorithms and databases and expert systems fully developed yet. But you know, as these things get into the marketplace, they get smarter, and we get smarter. It's not, it used to be that we got smarter on how to build the devices. These things now are designed to learn and, and to teach us what needs to be done, and as they start to get smarter, they'll start to do more. I definitely agree what you're saying on that. They are, they're here, and they're designed to learn, and that's the thing where robots are. You know, we talk about machine learning. Quantitative is where they, they are, they shine. When you get into the emotional component, that's where I feel like that's that's the part where where humans are going to find our sweet spot. We still need to kind of be able to, to 
um, manage the robots, be able to guide them in certain ways. For us to be ubiquitous with robots and robots to be ubiquitous with us, we've got to find this, this happy balance. Now, can we get to the, the, the whole George Jetson kind of, a, kind of a robot? Perhaps, but uh, you know, I think one of the big things is when you look at um, a, a piece of art, Picasso, uh, a robot can look at that and I don't, no matter how much analysis you put into it, I can look at, at a Picasso and go, that is amazing. That's like a billion dollar priceless piece of art where you can look at it and go, that's a piece of junk. I can't even, I wouldn't spend a buck on that thing. There's no way a robot can actually have that ability to kind of look at something objectively like that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we have a long way to go there. I'm not sure we actually want to go there because then there's no reason for us to exist. Where, uh, given, given that robots are now getting more and more capable of, of doing all sorts of stuff, what sort of sectors are we gonna see them move into, uh, either in the home or, or elsewhere? Well, you know, I, I, I think uh, you kind of start with the um, companionship, the security, the utility uh, kinds of applications. Uh, you know, if you look at the science fiction guys, uh, it goes and brews you a cup of coffee, makes your breakfast and brings that to you. And I think we're a little bit off from that. Uh, but these devices are already out there, uh, you know, in, in buildings delivering mail, uh, you know, providing uh, recreation and entertainment and education for, uh, for children. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just a question of them getting uh, more capable and um, uh, more feature rich uh, before we begin to see them in the moving, the, again, the kinds of things of interacting with a, between us and, and a person will be interacting with these machines. Sure. Yeah, I mean, right now we are definitely in a moment where the robots are, are becoming everyday experiences for us. Uh, Price Cooper Waterhouse says by, by 2020, 35% of robotic related jobs will remain vacant. So that just shows that there is going to be a big emphasis on finding robotic jobs, and we're not even preparing kids to figure out how to actually do that. So, uh, it's happening. We got to figure out how to actually prepare kids to, to begin to actually interact with, with robots and not just look at them as, as, as tools or as fun games, but as, as, as companions, as co-workers uh, in, in the very, very near, near future. As uh, robots become more and more companions and become more ubiquitous, uh, how important is it for us to be able to emotionally uh, connect with them? And conversely, what sort of responsibilities will, will people have in, in order to become more accepting of, of robots as they uh, pro proliferate. I think it's, it's so important to, to look at them uh, in certain ways. They are still robots, they are still machines, but ultimately um, there, are, there are ways that all of a sudden you can get emotionally attached to a robot. And we, we start at a very young age. We actually start to introduce robots at kindergarten with, with um, kids. And we decided the best way to introduce a robot to a kid is to make it gender neutral, make it age, age neutral, and make it just a very um, unassuming way to get introduced to robotics. Little by little, we start to introduce more and more concepts to them of how robots can help them, how robots can actually begin. They, you know, our number one goal is to kind of prepare kids to, to create and collaborate with, with robots.